Hello and welcome to this Contabile walkthrough. Today we're going to be talking about states. States are used to capture the settings of a song or a rack as a named state that can be later reloaded. You can think of states as being very similar to the preset slots on a plugin. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to quickly insert a couple of plugins. And I'll just load a sound into this one. And I'm going to delete the second route that Contabile created because I'm going to manage that myself. So you can see here I've got one route going to the piano plugin. I'll just turn this down a bit. Okay, and I can change the target of this route to the other plugin to change the sound we've got. Now what you can do is you can use states to manage this setting. So to create a new state, you click here on this new state button, or you can choose insert state from the menu and you give it a name. So I'm just going to call this intro. And I'm going to create another state and call it verse. And what I can do is I can say, okay, the intro, I want to use the piano and the verse, I want to use diva. And now when I switch between these states, piano, diva. Okay, that's, that's the basics of what states do. They control settings on objects and let you quickly switch between them. The next thing I want to show you is the fact that States only control the properties of an object, not the existence of an object. So if I was to insert another object now, uh, just brainstormer. What you'll notice is when I switch between these states, the object doesn't disappear. It still stays, stays in existence. But what Contabile has done is it's disabled the routes that didn't exist when the original state was created. So when the intro state was created, the, this route here didn't exist, so Contabile has automatically muted it so that you get the same behavior in the original state as before you added these new objects. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that and get back to where we were. Okay, states can control most attributes of objects. So you can see, for example, if I was to change the gain on this setting between the two states, so put this one back up, you can see switching states is adjusting the gain there. We can control things like the preset. So I've got two presets being toggled between there on the two different states. And most other attributes within Contable A can be controlled. If I was to select the metronome, for example, you can see here that I control the tempo and the time signature through states. So I might have one state with 60 BPM and one at 120. Okay, now these state behaviors here are used to determine what attributes of an object are controlled by states. So say for example, on this MDA piano, we didn't want the gain setting to be controlled by states. You can see here now how it's jumping around as I switch states. What we can do is we can select that plugin slot and clear the gain level setting. You'll see now that this setting is no longer controlled by states. So if I just switch between the two, you can see it's not being affected by the states. The state behavior panel is also a good way to figure out what attributes of which objects can be controlled by states. As I showed a minute ago, you can see selecting the metronome will display the attributes that can be controlled by states. If I was to select a binding or a trigger or many of the other objects in Contabile, they'll show up here as being controllable by states. And the default selections are chosen to give a expected behavior but not necessarily the behavior you always want. So that's why you have these controls here. The other thing about states is that they automatically update. So you'll notice that if, if I make a change in a state and then switch away and then back to it again, that was a bad example because I turned that off. I'll just turn that back on. You'll see that the original state remembers where it was automatically. So these states are automatically being updated. What's going on here? I just chose the same level for both. That was convenient. Okay, so these states are being updated automatically as I switch between them. If you get to the point where your states are all set up the way you want them and you don't want to accidentally modify them, you can choose to clear this option here, automatically update states. And what will happen now is Contabile will leave your states alone and won't update them unless you explicitly tell it to update the state here, in, at which point Contabile will go and capture all the settings again and save them away in the state.
The next thing you can do with states is what are called linked states or cloned states. So if you had uh, three or four verses where you had the same state in each one, you can create a linked state, verse 2 and another one, verse 3. And what happens here is these three states are all using the same underlying storage. So whatever you change in one state will be reflected in the other. And the idea is that you can set up a sequence of states, which some of them are the same as previous ones. So a typical case would be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and all your verses and all your choruses would be linked together. And you can simplify your maintenance then by just having to modify one when you make a change. States can be renamed by the edit state command. So you might decide you want to give this some other name. And you can also set program numbers on states. And the idea behind this is that you can create a binding from an external control surface and use that to send program changes and load a state given a program change. Okay, so as you can see, states are fairly powerful. They can be used to make fairly significant changes across a song or a rack. And that's about it. If you're interested in trying this, you can head over to cantabilesoftware.com. States are only available in Cantabile Performer. They're not available in Cantabile Solo or Cantabile Lite. But there's a trial there if you want to download it and give it a go. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.